Welcome to the martial art of Lima Lama. This Polynesian art is demonstrated by one of its greatest masters, Master Ted Tabura. In this tape, you will learn the fundamental techniques of Lima Lama, which will give you the foundation to progress to the higher tapes. Welcome to the world of martial art, the Lima Lama system. Master Tabura will begin by taking you through the warm-up, stretching, and conditioning exercises of Lima Lama. He will be Five, drilling his three, two sons through the exercises. Two, one, two, now, of three, course, this is not four, the complete warm-up and conditioning program. Feet together. This is to give you an idea Eight, of some of the exercises toes. involved Five. to prepare the body Five. for the techniques which count follow. It out, count it out, count it out, count it out. Four. Five. Five. Okay, feet apart. Hands out. Okay, right to left and left to right. Ready? One. One. Two. Two. Three, three, four. Loosening of the five, body is very five, important nine, for developing speed and power. Okay. High knees, go. Drop. Push ups. Ready? One, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. Down. On your back. Okay, sit ups. One, two, two, three, three. Only by four, preparing four, your body five, properly. Five. And getting it in top physical condition okay, and push ups. perform together. any martial art. Five, properly. three, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. Yeah. Okay, on your backs. Okay, feet over the head. Five, ready, Master one. Master Tabura wishes that you would follow along and with down. the two. students as they go through the routine. And down, three, and down, four, and down. The conditioning Five. exercises should be practiced and at down. least three days a week, no less. Okay. Put your hands behind your back. Okay, you're gonna rock. Ready? Go. One, two, three. Now rocking on the four. stomach to loosen the lower Five. back. Yeah. On your backs. Quickly. Here we go. All One, designed four. to avoid pulling ground. muscles and causing injuries. Hands out, hands out, hands out. Okay, down. Up. Down. Up. Leg lifts for strengthening the Down. legs, stomach, Up. and lower back. Down. Okay, on your stomachs. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Relax, relax, relax. Okay, regular push ups. Ready? One, two, one, two. And three, of course, three, four, the standard push ups four, five, five, for shoulder six, strength, six. Down. which increases your blocking okay, and punching power. Quickly. Okay, three on one side. Ready? One. Now hurdle stretches Two. to loosen the hamstring. Three. And remember to keep the toes together, back together, and your knee together. locked. Ready. One. Two. Three. Switch. Ready. One. Two. Three. Switch. Together. Ready. One. Two. Three. The master stresses Eight. the Two importance of conditioning. Three. Forehead to the knee. Ready. One. Two. He does not feel you can go three. on. Perform Ready, the self-defense techniques two, and advanced fighting techniques three, unless okay, you're up, in top three, physical three, condition. Need, Drop. Up. Drop. Up. Drop. Up. Keep it touching. Side, one inside. He now okay. begins partner stretching exercises. Grab the hands. Okay. By working with a you partner, pull. you are able to stretch beyond one the count. limit that you would stretch alone. Two, up and down. Three. In this routine, four, your partner puts his five. heels Switch above legs. your ankles, okay. pulling Ready. you forward. You pull. Ready. One, two, three, four. This will greatly five. help your kicking Yame. routines. You pull. Inside, outside, ready? One, two, three, four, five. Yummy. Okay, up. 
Let's go. With the brief warm-up now completed, we go into the stances of Lima Lama. These stances relate very much to Japanese or Okinawan styles of karate. The first stance is a ready or attention stance with your feet shoulders width apart pointed straight ahead. From here you will work into all your other stances. To the horse stance, feet very wide apart, again placing your weight down on your knees. This helps to strengthen the thigh muscles, keep your toes pointed straight ahead. And notice the fists ready at the sides. The back is straight and the head is up. This is a very strong fighting stance. Next we have the hourglass stance. With the right leg forward, turn the toes inward. Keep the knees bent. Keep your weight 50% on each leg. Distribute it equally. Back straight and head up. When you turn the toes in, tighten the legs slightly. This will help grip the ground, keep you very stable. Next, the cat stance. A very popular stance in many styles of karate. In this stance, you put 70% of your weight on the rear leg and 10% on the front. Most of the weight is on the rear so you can kick easily with the front leg. Keep the lead leg high on the ball of the foot. Now we have the T stance, very similar to the CAD stance, but keep the lead leg flat on the ground instead of on the ball of the foot. Again, distribute most of your weight on the rear leg as if you were sitting down. You want to keep that lead leg light so you can kick with it very easily. Next he shows the standard fighting stance, a wide stance keeping your hips sideways at your opponent. very versatile stance and it's very easy to move in this stance. Shifting back, front, side, or rear. From the stances we go to the punching techniques of Lima Lama. Again, many of these relate to popular karate systems. First punch is the reverse punch. Keeping the fist tight, circle step forward with the right foot, strike and twist your fist at the last moment of impact. Application on an opponent. When you strike with the fist, you hit with the two large knuckles. Notice whenever you strike, the other hand retracts to the chamber on the hip. Slow motion. Now we have the shudo or chop hand strike. This comes around with the edge of the hand striking into the neck. It can also be used to the rib cage. Oh, 
Look at it from the side. Comes around and snaps in, keeping the fingers tight together. Thumb down. A loud shout on impact. The shout will give you a burst of energy and power and also startle your opponent. Notice how it's used up and down the body. Ribs, groin, a very versatile strike. This strike is called the hammer fist strike. Coming around with the side of the fist, a most devastating strike. It's used to the temple, also to the ribs, groin, solar plexus. Twist the fist in at the last moment. Look at the power in slow motion. Can you imagine getting hit with that strike? You would never get off the ground. The art of Lima Lama is known for its devastating hand and blocking techniques. Watch the targets again. Temple, chest, collarbone, groin. Now we have a ridge hand striking with the inside edge of the hand. It comes around into the temple area, crushing the temple. A short whipping motion. Notice how the other hand blocks the midsection. You should be practicing along at home as the master performs each technique. Striking across the rib cage, into the groin. This is called a ridge hand. The master now strikes with a palm heel strike. Pulling the fingers way back and striking with the full palm of the hand. Face, solar plexus, and groin. Look at the power. This is probably the most devastating hand strike there is. Put all your energy behind each technique. The application. Cross the nose, solar plex, groin. You never know what area will be open on your opponent. Be ready to strike at anyone at any time. Don't always expect to hit your opponent in the face. What if he blocks? Then go to the groin. Always be aware of this. Now the fingertip strike to the eyes. One strike to the eyes, your opponent is finished. No one has strong eyes. Everyone will suffer from this strike. Watch closely. Fingers together, straight and strong. Bent slightly, so you don't jam your fingers on impact. Add the shout, add the shout for power. Get into your workout, follow along with the same spirit the master shows. Don't be lazy, get up and do the workout. Notice the strike straight into the eyes, very simple, very effective. This is especially good for women. You don't need a lot of power to hurt somebody in the eyes if they attack you. And of course, never use these techniques unless your life's in danger. The back knuckle snap strike. Watch. A tight fist snapping across the jaw or nose of your opponent. Retract it immediately to protect yourself. Do not leave the strike out. Look at it from the side now. 
on an opponent to the temple, jaw, nose, any one of the vital areas. And look at the control that the master exhibits. Next is the elbow strikes. These are used for in-close fighting when you cannot extend your arm. There's three, under the jaw, to the ribs, and straight down with the tip of the elbow on the back of the neck. Under the jaw again. Now watch, across the rib cage, breaking two or three ribs with one strike. And of course, breaking the neck or spine with the downward elbow strike. Notice the master's strong balance and good form. He always retains control when he strikes. So he can follow with another strike, punch, block, or kick. Never strike so hard that you fall off balance. Now watch these applications. A very versatile weapon but look how close he is to his opponent. That's what the elbow strike is for, in close fighting. And nine times out of 10, if you're attacked on a street, the opponent will be right on you. So practice the elbow strike. Now the bent wrist strike, or chicken strike. It may look odd, but it's very powerful. Keep your wrist bent way back and strike with the back of the hand near the wrist area. Watch again. The application, across the temple, down, breaking the collarbone. Very versatile weapon. Now we come to the kicking techniques of Lima Lama. Do not attempt these unless you have stretched the legs properly as shown in the warm-up exercises. The first kick is a front kick to the groin. This can also be used to the solar plex, throat, ribs, knee. Follow along. Bring the knee up high. Snap the ball of the foot out and back. Keep those toes curled way back. Look at the power in slow motion. Enough power to go right through your attacker. Kicking into the groin. Notice the speed, the quick snap. Retract the foot so your opponent cannot grab your leg and trip you down. The next kick is a side kick. Slide your rear foot up, trigger the knee up high, and snap out with the yes. side blade of the foot. Yes. Curl your toes inward and push the heel out. Follow along at home. Always do a couple slow to get your form and then speed and power as if someone were attacking you. Now against an opponent, right into the rib cage. Look how the heel strikes in and the toes are curled back so you do not injure the foot.
because of the reach of the leg, this is excellent to use against an opponent who has a knife or club. We now have the back kick, or spinning back kick. Turn your body, look over your shoulder, kick straight back with the heel of the foot like a horse. Very devastating kick. Twist quickly, strike with the heel, pulling the toes up. And back to a fighting position. Notice the strong balance. Speed is power. The faster the kick, the stronger the kick. When you're training, use your imagination. If you don't have an opponent or partner, kick into the mirror and use yourself as a target. Look at the quick turn and the explosion of power with the rear leg. The spin also totally confuses your opponent. When you turn, he may think you're running away, and as he moves in to chase you, he runs into the kick. Next we have the roundhouse kick. Bring your rear leg up high and twist your body sideways as you kick. He's striking with the ball of the foot, keeping his toes curled back. The same foot position as the front kick. Watch closely. The torque in the hips is everything. That's what gives you the power. The speed of takeoff and the quick twist. When they're done in slow motion, follow along at home. That's your opportunity to mimic the movements. Yes. Yes. Kick to the solar plex, head, groin, even yes. the knees. Yes. Again, you will never have strong, high kicks unless you go through the exercises to prepare yourself properly. Now we have a short, upward front kick into the groin. Doesn't look like much, but it will drop your opponent in a split second. Go straight up between the legs into the groin. Sometimes the simplest is the most effective. This kick is almost impossible to see coming. Keep the legs stiff. Straight up in the groin. Now we have a step spin heel kick straight up to the groin. This kick is only used for very in close fighting. Let's say the opponent grabs you in a bear hug. This is the kick you would use, straight up between the legs into the groin. Watch. Step, turn, with the heel up into the groin. One solid kick to the groin, and your opponent is finished. <laughs> Again, follow along at home. If you have a heavy bag at home, you should try this kick and kick under the heavy bag so you can get used to hitting an object, making contact. Now the same kick shown if someone grabs you from behind. Very simple, straight up between the legs.
We now have the knee kick. You do not extend your leg. You use your knee to strike and defend yourself. He sidesteps the punch, knees the opponent into the groin, solar plexus, or face. Sidestep the power of the punch into the solar plexus. Did you ever get hit in the solar plexus? It isn't pleasant. You get the air knocked out of you and you're finished. Probably more powerful than the extended foot of a kick. Short and sweet. Definitely can save your life someday. Ew. Now we're getting a little more advanced Ew. with the jump spinning crescent kick. Jump, turn sharply, come around with the side of your foot. Keep your knee slightly bent, taking your opponent's head off with this kick. Jump spin. Use the momentum of your body to generate the power. Ew. Ew. This is advanced, so be careful. Look at the height he gets. The spin of your body weight is what makes it devastating. It's called a crescent because of the crescent shape of the moon. You connect with this kick and your opponent does not have a chance of recovering. Notice the perfect accuracy of Master Tabur's student. Yes. Yes. Spinning crescent again without the jump. Spin the body around sharply. Keep the toes curled straight up and you're striking with the outside edge of the foot. Notice how the leg follows the shoulders as they turn. You must time it properly. If you kick too soon, you lose your balance and fall. When practicing, do it very slow to begin with. Just get the feel of it. Then start adding speed as you feel more comfortable with the kick. Watch it again. Application. Yes. Spinning. Striking across the face. Now we come to the true uniqueness of Lima Lama, the blocking techniques. What's special is their circular type of movements and flow and follow-up techniques. Watch carefully. Palming. The strike away, following with straight fingers to the eyes. You can only master these techniques by watching them over and over and over. Play back your machine and look at them each at least 10, 20 times. From the side. Double blocks, striking with the fingertips. This is Lima Lama. Dynamic, explosive, devastating hand techniques. Blocking two punches with the open palms, countering to the eyes, finishing with the hammer fist. You should be working with your partner at home. Follow along. These techniques will have 
added a whole new dimension to your karate kung fu training. Block, block, circular, circular. Palm strike to the temple. Hammer fist to the temple. The techniques flow, the master improvises. Use your imagination, look at it from a different angle. This is the first basic blocking technique of Lima Lama. It's like a windmill technique, a constant motion. Not a rigid block stop counter. It flows, it flows. Because Lima Lama believes your attacker will keep coming until he stops, so you must be ready for the other hand. Don't assume because you block one punch he's going to quit. He'll keep the hands coming and feet coming, so be ready. Next technique, blocking with the forearm. Again with the wrist, the wrist, and a hammer fist counter. Notice the flow, the hard soft. Softness of the blocks, hard on the counter. These circular blocking techniques help to throw your opponent off balance. They disrupt his force. All, of course, to your advantage. When your opponent is off balance, he cannot strike with full power. Again, watch and follow. Don't worry if you can't get it the first time. Try. Keep at it. Use your imagination. Block, block, strike, strike, strike. Now the application. Again, blocking two punches, coming across the jaw, countering with two strikes. Block, block, same hand blocks. Slap the face, back wrist solar plexus, palm face at the same time. Block, block, strike, strike. Watch it over and over. And it will become a natural movement to you. Notice the master's flow. With little effort, he can deflect his opponent's attacks. This is the secrets of Lima Lama, the uniqueness of Lima Lama. This art does not believe in hard force against hard force. It believes in deflecting the opponent's strength, using it to your advantage. A series of circular blocks, countering with the bent wrist or chicken strike that we showed earlier. These blocking techniques truly control your opponent's movements. Blocking across, coming back blocking, striking with the back of the open hand, finishing with a bent wrist strike. Follow along.
the flow. Notice the relaxed state the master's in. He's not forcing the technique. But it's very deceiving. He's exerting tremendous energy. But only where it is needed. Nothing is wasted. He has mastered chi or internal power. He hits you three times before you know what happened. And although those blocks look soft, he's causing tremendous damage to the opponent's arms and legs as he kicks and punches him. It's more like a delayed reaction. The next day, the attacker won't be able to walk because of the bruises. Again, watch carefully. Poetry in motion. This is one master you would not want to attack. Here's the application now. Watch again. Block. Strikes as he comes for the other block. A lot of deceptive moves that can't really be seen until they're applied. Yeah. Awesome speed and oh. power. The master never meets his man straight on. He turns to the side. If he ever misses the block, he's out of range of the punch. There's a purpose for every move he does. Elbows of solar plexus, bent wrist strike across the jaw, palm heel to the jaw. As you master the fundamentals of Li Malama, you can build on these techniques and develop your own. Study them carefully because, who knows, you might have to use them tonight. What if you were assaulted? How would you react? Well, this is certainly a positive way to defend yourself. Did you see that strike across the jaw as he meets the other punch? Bent wrist to the solar plexus, palm to the jaw, coming back again. Cross the jaw with the bent wrist. Look at his posture, very relaxed. He waits till the last moment then goes into action. He virtually knows what his attacker will do before he does it. He has developed a sixth sense. This relaxed state is very important. If you're stiff and nervous, your speed will not be there. You'll move slow and tight. relaxed and explosive. Watch again. Now, on this technique, everything is with the lead hand. Two blocks and a strike. He does not use the rear hand. 
Of course, the rear hand is there for a backup. But by practicing this technique, your lead hand can be equal to the power of two. Notice the shuffle forward on the strike to the face. That shuffle adds power to the technique. These fine points you should be very aware of. They make the difference between realistic power and just nonsense, just going through the motions. You don't want to go through the motions. You want to live the technique. You want to master the technique. So apply the fine points. That is the secret. Slow motion. Block, block, and strike. Coming down with a palm heel. You could also strike with a fingertip to the eyes. Whenever you see the master performing a loan, that is the time for you to go along with him at home. Mimic his movements. There is no reason you cannot learn these techniques at home if you practice diligently. That is the purpose of this video. It will bring you a whole new world of martial arts training. Master Tabura teaches in California, and if anyone is interested in studying with him or having seminars conducted by him, Simply write Panther Productions in care of Master Ted Tabura, and he will contact you personally. Now, the application of the technique you just worked on. Again, two blocks with the same hand, countering. Cross the neck, following with an elbow to the solar plexus. Look at it more closely. You can also use the elbow to block. That time he applied his rear hand to breaking the collarbone. Okay, block. Notice how he keeps his body sideways as he blocks. Comes down with the chop across the neck or breaking the collarbone, either one. Follows up, elbow to the solar plexus. Again, turns the wrist as he blocks. Keeps the flow going. Of course, when it's done at full speed, it's all within a split second. There is no hesitations.
again, open hand, blocking techniques, working much with the lead hand. In Lima Lama, they believe the lead hand should be effective enough to block. The rear hand is a backup. They believe it does not take much effort to block a punch or redirect a kick if done properly. Their blocking theory is deflection, sending the strike off onto a different course with little effort, which you can see is happening. Study this series carefully as it is shown from a side angle now. Now the application. Again, blocking double punches, striking to the neck, down the collarbone, and to the face. Yes. Continuous. Yes. So it's as if it was one movement. That's what you want to strive for, the constant flowing. These are just the basic blocking techniques of Lima Lama. As you get into the intermediate and advanced videos, you'll be amazed at the techniques involved. Techniques used against a gun attack, knife, two attackers or more. The training will truly turn your body into a whirlwind of defensive and offensive techniques. But first, the master wants you to master these fundamentals on the video you are now looking at. Now, from a different angle, you can see how the attacker is left vulnerable to all these counterattacks.
We truly hope you have enjoyed Master Tabura's video and look forward to his advanced tapes which will give you great insight into the devastating Polynesian martial art of Lima Lama.